All right, here it is. I present to you a new Neverwinter tutorial on how to quickly raise your item level. A few disclaimers, doing this will help. Even if you can't complete all of the bullet points we talk about today, at least try and get as much done as you can, and it should help you in getting your item level at least over 50K. Another thing to remember, markets are different on all platforms, so depending on your platform, you may find yourself having an easier or more difficult time. And I just want to also point out that I can't take full credit for everything you're seeing today. A lot of new players and even veteran players show up and give a lot of advice on what to do if you're a new player, and I appreciate everyone for helping. This is kind of a compilation of everyone's great ideas. Okay, so let's get started. Step one, do your adventures and just get to level 20. Pretty obvious, but every adventure is going to be a benefit to your character. Don't waste too much time worrying about anything else but your adventures. Once you finish Neverdeath, you'll learn to invoke. Start doing that right away. Once you finish Velosk, you can actually start doing professions. Not exactly recommended to sink much time into it right away, but there are some advantages to starting them when you can get them unlocked, which I can put out a full-blown guide to its benefits in another video. After Velosk, you'll actually get to Ebb and Downs. You'll be Right around level 11. Start doing your daily skirmish queue for some rough astral diamonds. After completing ebb and downs, you'll also get your first epic mount. You can put that on your mounts page right away, as well as the collar that it gives you from that same adventure. We're not going to go through all of the rewards that you get through your adventures, but just go all the way up to Scalblight Summit. By then, you should have decent rewards and a good amount of rough astral diamonds that you can convert to zen every day. Of course, while doing your adventures, you can start tackling your campaigns as well when you unlock them. All of it is beneficial. I mean, literally all of it. Step two, join a guild with boons. Obviously, it would be most beneficial to join a guild hall 20 because it will provide you with the highest amount of item level with the boon options. If you get invited to a guild that's a work in progress, that's totally okay and honestly very noble of you. You can still get boons in those guild halls, they just won't provide as much item level. And since the video is all about getting to 50k item level, just be forewarned that a guild hall 20 is really what you want to be looking for to increase your maximum benefits from the guild boons. To find a guild, you you can just open up the find a guild in your menu section. Okay, on to step three, mounts, collars, and insignias. I recently did a video showing you that you can get all of your mounts, collars, and insignias for a little under 100k astral diamonds. At this point, you should have accrued at least 100k astral diamonds, and that'll help get yourself some decent stuff for your mounts page. Having 10 epic mounts is going to increase your bolster and your item level. Start purchasing epic mount collar choice packs, epic mounts, or even legendary ones if you can afford it, and of course, get insignias over time as well. If you have VIP and you've been collecting trade bars, you can also get epic insignias from the trade bar store. Okay, and that actually brings me on to step four. That's speaking of VIP. I would say VIP is the one thing that's just absolutely worth it to spend money on in this game. At least your first month. It's about $10 in real cash, or 600 to 750k astral diamonds if you're converting your AD into Zen. Of course, always look out for a coupon to make that cheaper for you on the Zen market. And if there's a sale going on, that's a great time to jump right in. And just as a reminder, you can get coupons from your daily invocation baggies. And the reason why I wouldn't feel bad spending money on VIP in this game is it's going to completely increase your experience and your quality of life on the game. Not to mention your daily lockbox opening. You'll get one key daily that you can use to open a lockbox of your choice. The current lockbox can be found in the Wondrous Bazaar for a couple hundred astral diamonds. You can open that, or if you're looking for something specific, you can search for other lockboxes in the consumable section in the market. Opening the lockbox daily will provide you with strong potential rewards to help build up your character. You may have to spend the $10 the first month, but after that, you should be able to accrue enough AD to convert into Zen in order to cover the next months and probably all of the rest of the months that you play the game. Converting AD into Zen is fairly easy. Just know that there's about a week time frame that you have to wait on console right now. I know that's different on every platform, but you can convert using the AD exchange by typing in how much Zen you want to purchase and the maximum amount of AD. Because it is always capped at 750 now, you will just put the amount of Zen you want to buy and then in the next tab over where it shows the astral diamonds, you'll just put 750. You'll place your order and it's gonna sit there for some time so you can just leave it there in the background and at some point your Zen will come through and you'll have that to purchase your next bit of VIP. No, not lockboxes, not keys. VIP, it's a warning. Don't do the Ava thing. Really, actually buy your VIP. I mean it. You're not seeing me right now, but I am pointing my finger at you. Okay, let's move on to step five. This is about companions. Yeah, this can be a bit more pricier, but finding epic companions to put on your character will be really worth it. Just like mounts, you'll be getting bolster and item level to boost your character. 
The adventures will provide some assistance to your companions like it will the mounts, but also the auction house has some decently priced epic companions you can look out for. Companion equipment is also helpful. You should be able to get this as well in your adventures and your campaigns along the way. All right, step six is enchantments. And this is super important to pay attention to because you can easily get scammed on this. Enchantments will be a good boost to your character, but purchasing them may seem expensive if you're looking at the enchantment vendor. She has an insane markup on these enchantments, or perhaps other players are just insanely undercutting her on the auction house. Either way you look at it, enchantments are hands down tons cheaper on the auction house. Get yourself four offensive and defensive ones. Also get yourself a utility enchantment and a bonus one. Just a reminder, bonus ones do not contribute to item levels. So if there's one you're gonna leave out, I would leave out that one. What you pick up is totally up to you. I could definitely give you some tips about it in the comments below though if you have any questions. As a reminder, upon completing the Chasm Adventure, you will also get an enchantment choice pack from there. And as for your companion, there is a companion enchantment that you will want to pick up. The higher quality that you can afford, the better for that one. And you can also get yourself a weapon enchantment as well. Pick up something that's suited for your class. And if you also need more help on that, please let me know in the comments below. And when it comes to enchantments, if you can afford a higher rarity, then fantastic. Um, that's going to be more beneficial to your item level. But there is a fine line between what is cheaper to level up yourself and what ends up being cheaper on the auction house. It's really a game you have to play. And I'm not a professional at it by any means. I always have to pull out the calculator every time I'm looking for a new enchantment. So it is hard to get down. But at least get yourself the uncommon ones. They are still definitely the cheapest to get them right on the auction house. Moving along to step seven, let's talk about cheap gear, seal gear, and artifacts. Yeah, I put a load of stuff in step seven, but this all kind of applies to the same thing, the front of your character page. The first thing you pull up is gonna be your gear and your artifacts. That has a load of item level that you can apply to it. The auction house is currently flooded with loads of cheap gear. The new Menzo Baranzan area actually has rings, shirts and pants that can be purchased on the auction house. I totally recommend you grabbing any of the items that suit you because they are the highest item level at this time. So you will be getting the premium item level for that gear piece. Also on your travels, you should have been receiving seals of the adventurer. Make sure to visit the seal vendor in the enclave or in your VIP menu and fill in the blanks of gear that is your lowest item level. The adventure gear is only about 950 item level, but hey, it will get you boosted as you go. Also, there have been some packs that have been flooding the market. They are called the Dashing Choice Pack or something like that. You have the option of choosing a hat from one of the packs or a chest plate from another. You can either search for the packs themselves or the gear themselves and just see which one's cheaper. But those are huge item level bonuses for you and they're really cheap for legendary gear. Okay, as for artifacts, you should look into getting four artifacts the moment that you can. Epic levels would be ideal, but do what you can because those do provide item level. From what I've noticed, the rare quality artifacts go for about 20k each, and the epic quality run about 70 to 80k each. If you need help deciding on what artifacts to get, just try and get something that provides a debuff. There are so many of those now, and you might be able to find one cheap, like Charm of the Serpent maybe, Heart of the Black Dragon perhaps. Lantern of Revelation, you should get in your campaigns, but you might be able to get a higher level on the auction house. There's a lot of different options. I would try and really research it, but at the same time, as long as you're getting four epic artifacts, you're gonna have a good boost to your item level. Also, if you have been running your daily queues, you should be getting other seals as well that you can purchase that have very high item level between like 18 and 1900. Okay, I swear we're getting towards the end. Here we are at step eight, get to Menzo Baranzum while you can. You can currently do the newest campaign regardless of your item level. This is huge value for new players because that means you can get in the new areas and farm heroics. If you've saved up enough astral diamonds and currency, you can start purchasing the legendary gear from the campaign store. These are crazy 2000 item level pieces and at the moment they're available to anyone who can get to Menzo Baranzan and start questing and doing the heroics in weekly hauls. To start the Menzo Baranzan mission, you pick up the quest from Nox called Whispers in the Dark and your journey begins. Good luck. Okay, this is my final step. Skirmishes. You should run as many skirmishes as you can when you have some downtime. There are a few reasons why, and although this doesn't directly increase your item level, these however are quick and can drop some really good rewards and refinement for when you're ready to upgrade. I personally recommend Master of the Hunt or Dread Legion just because they're super quick. Dread Legion can also drop an epic companion called the Inner Gone or Inner John? Inner Gone? 
Okay, listen, I looked it up and you can say it either way. At least people say it other ways. It seemed like they know way more about D&D than me. So I'm going to call it the Energon. I'm going to call it the Energon. <sighs> now I can't decide. Oh my god. Anyway, listen, let's just move on from this. <laughs> the Dread Legion skirmish can drop the Energon, which I guess that's what... The Dread Legion Skirmish can drop this companion, which will help towards your bolster and overall item level, having them bound to your character. Good luck in your RNG and bowling one. Also, many skirmishes drop transmogs so that can be sold on the auction house as well. These are just really quick, good ways to earn some extra rewards every day, and they're great because you don't have to wait long in queues since it doesn't have like a role specific queuing system. Okay, I am exhausted, but the list goes on, however. Anytime you can make an upgrade, do it. There are some paths you may want to take before others, but all in all, your progression will just be easier and easier the more you put towards anything on your character. Honestly, I feel the companions and mounts are the strongest value to your item level. The more upgrades you can make surrounding those areas will be a huge benefit and make sure to get the cheap gear on the auction house the moment you can afford it. If there's anything else that you needed help with in the future, just let me know in the comments below.